What's up guys, I'm Scott Herman, Team BSN Athlete, and today I'm gonna to show you how to build a 3D chest, and I'm going to give you a complete workout guide. So a big chest is usually at the top of the list when it comes to fitness goals for men. It's not only a sign of a seasoned lifter, but it's also a requirement for a strong aesthetic physique. But what does it take to build a massive 3D chest? Each week, I'm sure you see the same people at the gym training their chest with no significant growth. Their routines are like clockwork. Barbell bench press, barbell incline bench press, dumbbell chest fly, pec deck, and repeat. Sounds familiar, right? When your workouts become routine, your body doesn't have to exert as much energy to complete the same task, resulting in less muscle stimulation. This is because as you perform the same movements over and over again, your body is continuously adapting and becoming more efficient at that movement. Now although this ability is critical for survival, it can be a problem in terms of gains. The following workout plan is going to release you from this endless training cycle that is hindering your results. Over the next six weeks, you are going to train your chest twice a week, one day will focus on heavy lifting, while the other will focus on high volume. Each day will consist of around 20 to 25 working sets per workout and take you one step closer to having a massive chest that will burst out of your shirt from any angle. This program will also include a very unique pec blast finisher at the end of each routine. This finisher exercise is going to ensure that no matter what, when you leave the gym on chest day, you will have completely exhausted all the muscle fibers in your chest. Remember, it only takes 48 to 72 hours for your muscles to recover, and waiting a full week to train the same muscle group could be what's holding you back. So why wait a full week to stimulate a muscle group when you can start a new growth period to maximize muscle gain? And if you are wondering if this, if this strategy can be utilized for other body parts, the answer is yes. This technique can also be applied to any body part you would like to grow. Today's workout is going to consist of a total of 23 working sets. And remember guys, we're splitting this into two parts. The actual routine followed by the pec blast finisher. For the routine portion of the workout, you're going to be performing four exercises and each exercise is going to have five sets and the sets are going to be pyramiding down. Remember, we're working with progressive overload on day one, so you want to make sure you're adding weight when you can. And by pyramiding down, that's going to ensure that we're able to do this. So the sets are going to work like this. Set one is going to be ten repetitions, then you're going to do eight reps, eight reps again, and the last two sets are going to be six repetitions. And your rest periods are only going to be two to three minutes max. So if you have to get a stopwatch to ensure you're not resting too long, then that's what you need to do. Now for the exercises, the first movement is going to be the barbell bench press. For the barbell bench press, you want to make sure that you're keeping your butt glued to that seat the entire time, maintain a slight arch in your back, keep your feet flat on the ground, push your knees out, and you also want to make sure that you're retracting your shoulder blades so you can bring that barbell all the way down to your chest with every single repetition. I don't want to see any half reps, and I don't want to see any momentum reps. As soon as you finish all five sets, you're gonna move on to the next exercise, which is the barbell incline bench press. Once again, guys, you wanna make sure that that butt is glued to the seat, have a slight arch in your back, keep your feet flat on the ground, push your knees out, and most importantly, retract those shoulder blades. If you don't get your shoulder blades retracted properly, you're gonna have a really hard time bringing that barbell all the way down to your chest. Another quick tip that might help you guys out is put, tucking your elbows forward a little bit on this movement. That's also going to ensure that you're not putting too much strain into your shoulders. As soon as you finish exercise two, third exercise is going to be a dumbbell chest fly. Now on this exercise, I'm going to have you do it a little differently than what you're used to. I want you guys to basically bring those dumbbells down as far as you possibly can on every single repetition. 
So what this means is you're probably going to have to use lighter weight than what you're used to. We're still going to follow, follow the same form with our lower body, butt glued to the seat, feet flat on the ground, pushing your knees out, slight arch in your back, tight core. But with your upper body, it's going to be so important that you guys keep those shoulder blades retracted. If you do not retract your shoulder blades, that's going to be the difference between working your chest and injuring your shoulders. So once again guys, retract those shoulder blades, keep a slight bend in your elbows, and bring those dumbbells down as far as you possibly can, and really squeeze that chest on the way up. The last exercise you're going to be doing is a dumbbell pullover. Now for this movement, you do not have to have your lower body hanging off the side of a bench. It's actually going to be much more beneficial to lay on a bench flat, like you normally would when doing a barbell bench press. It's also going to be important to note that you can change the angle of this exercise to target your chest more or your lats. Our focus is going to be the chest, so you only want to have a very slight bend in your elbows as you bring that dumbbell all the way back to the floor and up and over your chest. The more you bend your elbows when you do this exercise, the more you start to engage your lats. So make sure you don't do that. And again, start off a little light, bring that dumbbell all the way to the floor, and really focus on activating your chest. Now as soon as you finish all four exercises, you're going to move on to your pec blast finisher. And the way this is going to work is you're going to need an adjustable bench and a pair of dumbbells. You also might need a few pair of dumbbells depending on how fatigued you are by the time you get here, or you might get fatigued during the finisher, and it's going to be a good idea to have a few pairs anyways. So you're going to start off, you guys are going to do one round, 15 reps per exercise, and it's three exercises we're going to do right in a row with no resting. So you're going to start off with a 45% incline on your bench press, and you're going to perform 15 repetitions. As soon as you've done those 15 reps, you're going to drop the bench down to a 30% incline and perform 15 more repetitions. And as soon as you finish those 15, you're going to drop the bench completely flat and do another set of 15 reps. And that's going to be your pec blast finisher, and by the time you're done this, your chest is going to be destroyed. So make sure you do what you gotta do, eat, take your supplements, because day two is right around the corner. Now with day one behind you, we're going to give your central nervous system a bit of a rest while we attack your chest again. Lifting heavy places a lot of strain on your CNS, and we want to make sure that over the next six weeks, you do not burn out from consistently lifting heavy. It is also important to know that heavy lifting or mechanical tension is just one of the three muscle building mechanisms. Day two will focus on the other two growth mechanisms, metabolic stress and muscle damage. Therefore, day two is going to focus on volume and exercises that put tension on your pecs while in a stretched position for maximum damage to your muscle fibers. The rest periods will be shorter, the repetitions will be consistently higher, you will be performing supersets, and once again, you will finish off your routine with the pec blast finisher. The day two workout is going to consist of a total of 24 working sets, and once again, this time we're focusing more on high volume and shorter rest periods. You're going to be doing a total of three supersets, followed by the pec blast finisher. For each superset, you're going to be performing two sets of 12 to 15 repetitions, and you're only going to be resting 60 to 90 seconds max in between each set. And for those of you who don't know, when doing the superset, you complete both exercises before resting and then completing the next set. So the first superset is going to be a dumbbell incline bench press followed by a dumbbell incline fly. For the dumbbell incline bench press, I want you guys to have the same form you did on day one, except now we're using dumbbells. Key points here guys, keep those shoulder blades retracted, slightly tuck those elbows forward if you need to, bring those dumbbells all the way down to your chest and all the way to the top. Fully extend those arms, no momentum and no half reps. Keep that core tight, slight arch in your back, keep your butt glued to the seat, 
feet flat on the ground and push your knees out. You want to make sure that your lower body is as strong as possible to make sure you can lift as much weight as you can for those 12 to 15 reps. Now for the dumbbell incline fly, you're going to have the same form that you had for the incline bench press, except now you're doing a fly. And again, it's going to be very important that you guys retract those shoulder blades. If you do not retract your shoulder blades when doing this exercise, you're going to feel a lot more pressure throughout your shoulders as you perform the movement. So keep a slight bend in your elbows and bring those dumbbells down as far as you can or as far as your flexibility will allow and just make sure you bring them all the way up to the point where they almost touch the top at the top of each repetition. For the second superset, you guys are going to do a dumbbell flat bench press followed by a dumbbell fly. So everything's going to be flat this time. Same form here guys that you guys had on the barbell bench press. You're going to be laying flat on the bench, feet on the ground, knees pushed out, keep those glutes nice and tight, slight arch in your back, keep that core tight, and most importantly, retract those shoulder blades. On every single repetition here as well, make sure you bring those dumbbells all the way down to your chest and get a full extension at the top. As soon as you finish 12 to 15 repetitions, immediately go into the dumbbell fly. Again, everything stays the same. Make sure you retract those shoulder blades and go as low as you can with every single repetition. Now guys, it's okay if you have to adjust your weights during or after or in between each set. This is a high volume day. So it doesn't matter how much weight you're lifting, the focus here is short rest periods and doing more sets and repetitions. So keep that in mind, kick the ego to the door. Now for the third superset, you guys are going to be doing a Sven press followed by a wide grip push up. The way you're going to do the Sven press is you're going to grab two plates, probably start off with five or tens, and you're going to place your palms on each plate and then push them together in front of your chest. Once in place, while keeping a tight core in your chest up, you're going to extend your arms out in front of you as far as you can and then hold it for a second and then bring your hands back to your chest and you're doing 12 to 15 repetitions. As soon as you finish those, you're going to drop right to the floor and do your wide grip push-ups. So for the wide grip push-up, you want to have your hands outside of shoulder width. And again guys, when doing this exercise, bring your chest all the way to the floor and get a full extension with every single repetition. You're going to be completing two sets, 12 to 15 reps, and you're only resting 60 to 90 seconds max. And as soon as you finish all of that, we're moving on to the pec blast finisher. And it's going to be the same exact thing that you guys did on day one, except today you're doing two rounds. So I'm going to refresh you real quick. Going to start off on a 45% incline and do your dumbbell incline chest presses. As soon as you finish uh, 15 repetitions, you're going to go to a 30% incline, 15 reps, drop it down flat, 15 repetitions. You're going to rest 60 to 90 seconds and then do one more round in day two's workout is complete. Now I know you guys are excited to start this routine, but a word of caution before you do. If you're not used to such an intense workout, you do not want to overdo it your first time you try this split. For the first week, I want you to push yourselves, but keep the intensity a bit lower. This will minimize soreness and allow you to perform the following week's workout without any problems. Remember, if you're used to the same old chest routine, your body has adapted to those exercises. And if that's the case, the amount of muscle stimulation that your chest will be exposed to with these workouts will be astronomically higher. So pace yourselves. I'm looking forward to seeing your results. Be sure to post comments below if you have any questions. And most importantly, go take a picture of your chest right now. Because in six weeks, I want to see the side-by-side -side comparison. If you guys want to see the complete workout guide for this video, be sure sure to go down and click the link below to bodybuilding.com.